It is December 10th, 2017, and still in the old house. As you can see, hacking has commenced. It's not finished yet, but um, before I move, I wanted to go ahead and do another, have another brew, and uh, did a real simple one. 10 pounds of two row and a pound of crystal 20, and we're using some Amarillo and Mosaic hops, a little bit of Centennial to uh, for part of the part of the bittering. But we're uh, gonna see if I can do a grain to glass. I have to name this uh, brew something special since it'll be brewed in my current house here, and then by the time. I'm drinking on it. It will be in the new house, which will, you know, about a month from now. So, a little over a month, I'll be drinking on that keg. So, yeah, I'll come up with a name of with the name, and um, yeah, we'll um, we'll just see if we could do a green glass. So, stay tuned, man. Um, currently, I had the strike water. Um, got it up to about 168, 170 dowed in and we're about at 153 154 which is okay so we're gonna let that go so yeah stay tuned late all dowed in got about 45 minutes left on the mash yeah. coming up on the bowl the burl. Half an ounce of mosaic in at 60. Green sludge. Cheers, guys. So, I didn't film too much of the brew due to I had my sister she dropped by so I showed the boil and uh, you know did the boil and um, you know added all the hop additions and all that stuff she wanted to see how you know how it happens you know from a brewing standpoint so it, it was pretty much uh, going through everything with my sister so um, I got her uh, I got the beer the wort Put to bed with the US05. I did that about 10 minutes ago. We got it down to about 75 degrees. So let me see if I can switch this thing around. All right, so we're in the closet and I just pitched the yeast, filled up the airlock, and we should have some activity here soon. So it was fresh US05 yeast. So I will be harvesting it, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking of calling this thing the halfway house. Uh, American IPA because I'm actually brewing it in my my old house and by the time we get to you know getting it aged a bit and fermented out and all that crap it will be in the new house so this will be called the halfway house American IPA see you in a bit Good. Hey all, how you doing? So we're getting ready to rack over the rack over the, the grain to glass uh, halfway house IPA to a keg. I'm getting some stuff moved out of the way. We're in the closet. 
currently uh, watching uh, Brian from Short Circuit Brewers. Brian from Short Circuit Brewers. Watching him online. Sorry about the uh, focus here. Focus. Ooh, here we go. My light's kind of screwed up in this closet. So yeah. So I'm gonna see what I can do here. As you can see, I have the keg and everything ready to go. I already cracked it open and took a reading. Haven't looked at the reading yet. I wait till I'm done. But it's attenuated out. It has attenuated out. So I'm gonna get everything put into the shower. Everything is nice and sanitized. You. It's been a while since I've done this, man. Gotta get for uh, moving, right? <laughs> if you hear the noises in the background, Brian's uh, he's brewing a stout. Put some star sand on. Yeah. Well, I put it over the, the opening of the keg. I think the extra camera is, uh, yeah, let's just see what's going on here. Woohoo! Looky there, guys. Yeah, it's it's today's Sunday. God, I don't even know what the date is. I'll probably put it up here, but I brewed this last week, so it it, it stopped bubbling about two days ago. So it had five days of real good fermentation. So, yeah, let it go extra day, day and a half. And we're plugging into the keg. Can't see right now because it's dark in here. Oh, I can't wait to get into the new place and hopefully I have better accommodations when I'm doing stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, be back when uh, I got this thing moved over. Thanks. Leet. Uh oh. <laughs> Please, man. Right, looks like we got it racked over. Now I'm gonna, since I'm using a brand new US05, I'm going to be saving it. So, yep. Yeah. A little bit, guys. Like you did. Yep, we're gonna decant that down. Or decant it. We're gonna we're gonna play with this and harvest, harvest, harvest. Later guys. Well, cheers here checking in. Went ahead and did a gravity ring on the on the halfway house IPA, it just uh, racked over to the keg, and I got it on uh, on some CO2 right now. Um, I am not worried about the temperature right now on it to get the carbonation because it's going to be carving over probably the next three to four weeks. So I'm not really worried about that because I got to get it all moved over. But yeah, take a look at that. It's, it came out pretty clear. I mean, um, my, uh, if you look at my flask or my, uh, my, uh, what do you call this thing? A cylindrical container, test tube, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's not too, it, I've had it since the beginning of time and, uh, it's kind of, uh, so yeah, you can tell it's, it's pretty clear. I got, I went from a 1061 down to a 1010, which came out to 6.69, I always call it 6.7% uh, ABV. Uh, the IPA, the bitterness is, is there at the beginning and at the end, but it's not overwhelming. It 
it's a very uh, juicy, uh, grapefruity. Not too, not too harsh on the grapefruit, but some really good uh, fruit. And then on the back end, uh, you get that uh, in the middle of the tongue, you know, going back. That uh, tastes just uh, phenomenal. I think this is going to come out really good. So, yeah, cheers, guys. So we'll see you on the next on the next one. I'll show you some footage here of uh, the keg in the basement. I don't have it the keys or I'm not plugging that in until we get to the new place. So CO2 on this. So I don't want to hear any griping or anything about, oh, we need to do a cold temperature or whatever. It's going to be sitting on CO2 for a long time. So don't worry about it. Cheers, guys. Hey everybody, cheers! This is uh, the grain to glass that I promised, one of them at least. This is the uh, Halfway House IPA. I had cold crashes for probably um, two days before I kegged it and then I kept it at set room temperature but 30 pounds of CO2 on it. Uh, for probably two weeks. I just had it sit there. I would turn the gas on and let it get to pressure and then just let it set. But this thing really came out clear. Uh, going into the keg, it was clear. I was making sure that when I racked it over, I didn't uh, bring any trube or anything over from the fermentation bucket. So turned out really good. Um, the head doesn't look like there's much to it, but it's, uh, I've been drinking on this for, for a couple days now and the head is actually really malty it sticks all over the glass i think i got a couple photos i can put up here that you can see from yesterday when i was having a brew day uh, yeah it turned out really good carbonation if you see it's a uh, really well carbonated it's got a great color you can see right through this thing uh yeah it's uh it turned out really good so the smells on this just malt forward with a bit of uh, bitterness coming through the head from the hop. You got that uh, grapefruity, uh, you know, um, taste I was or smell I was looking for. The aroma. It's not too heavy. Let's go ahead and uh, dive into this thing. It's about a medium uh, IBU for me. This came out to around. I think 50 IBUs, which is not too high for me. Got a really good balance of the malt and the hops. Um, you get the initial hop taste on the inside of the, you know, your cheeks where it hits your cheeks where, you know, when you have something tart go in. It's not too bad from that standpoint, but the hop lingerness does stay on the tongue. It's a little sweet. Uh, it's well rounded. Um, bubbles dance on your tongue, and the finish is really clean. All right, so along with the the regular stuff that uh, uh, we usually do when we're uh, testing a, a beer from the standpoint of other people's homebrew that they send to us or whatever, where we go through what it looks like, what it smells like, and then you taste it and you, you kind of give an overall uh, rating on it. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I have a sheet that um, I found online. I'll probably tweak it to, to uh, the satisfaction, you know, that I want on kind of sim simplified uh, rating scale. So, uh, but before I get into that on the rating, I really want to uh, touch something that I've uh, been uh, looking at online for a while now, which is uh, water. 
And I want to uh, give a shout out to Tony Yates, who kind of gave me the inspiration to to take a look of what uh, what water does for your brew and uh, some things that he said, along with what John Palmer and the other guys have said. It's more or less. It's like a good analogy is making a, a really good pizza sauce. Sure, you have the base tomato stuff, but if you don't have your water right, you're not going to taste the sweet basil and all of the different uh, different uh, ingredients that are in there that you that you spent money on and added correctly. You're not going to get the balance that you're looking for or the the correct hop. Uh, resonance within the the brew itself. So I want to give uh, I want to give a shout out to Tony and give him praise on what he's done. If you get a chance, take a look at his his uh, water stuff on online. He's got a three part series and take the time and go through that. But put that off to the side. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> but for this one, you know, since I'm doing grain to glass, I might as well go all the way through. And I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, uh, five categories of uh, what I want to rate on from a one to five scale. And the first one is aroma. And on this one, like I stated before, it's got a great, um, great malty and hot presence. It's well balanced in the nose. And it's nice that the head is uh, not large on this. Otherwise, it's hard to get through that the head to uh, get a good sniff on, especially when you got, it's, it's really hoppy. So uh, for the aroma, it's a really balanced aroma. Uh, you, you get that uh, caramel note in there from uh, the crystal in here. So um, I guess everything is gonna go through the, the ingredients. So this had a pound of uh, crystal 20 in it and 10 pounds of two row. So it was very simplified. Uh, for the hops, it had mosaic, amarillo, and centennial in it. So, so on aroma from a rate to one to five, uh, since it's supposed to be an IPA, and this came out to uh, a bitterness of 50 IBUs, I was looking to get a bit more uh, bitterness out of it from aroma and taste standpoint. So it's not going to make five at all. Um, this will probably make a three on this, on this recipe. So, you know, it was there, but it's not completely there. As for the appearance, I'm really happy on the appearance because of the, um, the way that it was cold crashed and racked over without getting a lot of sediment and didn't even have to add gelatin or anything else to clarify it. So appearance on this is going to be, I think you can agree, that's about a five. That's about as good as you can get. It's got the great uh, caramel color, it, uh, um, that copper, copper color for the style. So I think that kind of tops on that one. Drinkability. See what I mean about the lacing too? Uh, drinkability, it's very well, it, it's nice on the palate. It's very, very balanced from the malt hop standpoint, like I stated before. Um, this is not a sessionable beer. This is a 6.5% IP, IPA. Um, original gravity is 1061, final gravity is around 1010. So, um, about 6.5 so the drinkability is um it, it's drinkable but you this is not one you want to drink all day you'll get smashed mm. now a bit too constant look at that lacing so drinkability on this uh it there's no harshness to it at all i don't taste any uh astringent anything astringent in it i don't taste anything that's kind of off at all um, so out of one out of five I'm gonna give it a four uh, as I stated with the aftertaste you get a little bit of the hopness it's on the back of the tongue and uh, you that malt flavor is it just goes throughout the whole from the lips to the throat you know thing so aftertaste it it's got a it's got a great aftertaste it doesn't leave um, anything anything uh, that seems off on on your tongue when you're done drinking it so um for the style I, i'm not going to give it a five or a four i think i'll give it a three on it 
And the overall impression of this, I'm happy with what came out because this was a brew in the bag. So when you're doing brew in the bag, you have a lot of uh, extras that are in there that you're not um, really uh, getting out through filtration or anything. It's what you see is what you get with the brew in the bag. You're you're all water and you're all of the um, all your grains. Everything is going into that, and you have a lot of a lot of stuff in your boil. So overall impression of the beer, I think, is pretty good for for a brew in the bag. When I start on the electric system, that's going to be a different story. I finally got to play with pumps to see how the recirc would clear up by setting the grain bed, and I did that yesterday doing Craig's Kolsch, and I was very impressed on how the grain bed and my new um, false bottom worked out in the mash tun, because my beer was very clear when it went into the boil pot. So. Um, that compared to this, that's apples and oranges, because brewing the bag is totally different than doing an all grain, doing going through that whole process and all of that. So my overall impression of this one, I'm gonna give it probably a four. And if I add all these up, I don't know why. Uh, I think what happens is this the sheet that I'm looking at right here, I'll probably modify it but they show testing. It looks like you can put multiple types of brews on here, and at the end, you can have a total score to see which one was the best, but um, I think this came out to be a, a very average beer. I mean, there was nothing nothing special. It was, it was put together, uh, you, you know, as a brew in the bag, just as a, a quick brew to do while I had the time and, and did it, and I think it came out pretty good, so... Yeah, guys, um, I think that's about it on this one. So uh, I'll get this all wrapped up, put together, and uh, uploaded to the to YT, and uh, we'll go from there. So remember, keep rocking. Keep doing what you're doing. Never stop homebrewing. Enjoy yourself. Have a great week. Cheers. Pretty good. See ya.